And as the football world and its fans have been starved of the very beautiful game, the German Bundesliga becomes the first major European soccer league to return, and the eyes of the world will definitely be on it. Now, looking at the fixtures of the games to be played this weekend, talking about the German Bundesliga, Augsburg will be taking on Volksburg, and it feels good talking about this because for about six weeks now, we've not been able to talk about football games and the fixtures of leagues spread across Europe. Borussia Dortmund will be taking on Schalke 04, Fortuna will be taking on Paderborn, and Hoffenheim will be at home to Hertha. RB Leipzig will be taking on Freiburg. Frankfurt, Frankfurt takes on Borussia Mönchengladbach. And on Sunday the 17th, FC Cologne will take on Mainz 05, while FC Union Berlin will take on league leaders FC Bayern Munich. And the last game will be played on Monday and to see Werder Bremen take on Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, interesting games right there and I can't wait to see football matches again. Well, we'll be speaking with Omar Akatuba, who was a year older two days ago and I'll be wishing him a belated happy birthday. If he's online, um, uh, I'd like to know. Um, Omar, are you there? Oh, he's yes, right I'm there. Yes, I'm live. I'm live. Why? Wow, you're boxing. Are you Mike Tyson? Yes, that's that's a, a display of how excited I am Oh, really? As football comes again this weekend. Okay, well, first let me say a belated happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank now, you. now, a lot of eyeball has been on the German Bundesliga, and of course, this weekend the league resumes. Please bring us up to speed with the latest development over there in Germany. Well, the latest development is that uh, matches will be played this weekend. Mm. Fantastic news. Five substitutions will be allowed, recommendation by IFAB, the International Football Association Board. And then, um, of course, players will, will be tested uh, before the games. Only those with uh, two positive, uh, I beg your pardon, negative results, negative results. will be allowed to, to play the games and um, so on and so forth. Uh, the Bundesliga is ready. And of course, um, everyone is raring to go. Now, let's talk about the, because there was a time they said they're not sure if they'll be completing 45 minutes for each half. Are we going to have accurate 45 minutes of football games? I think that will remain. Um, that was a, basically a speculation. Yeah. It will remain 45 minutes for each half. That is exactly why they have recommended uh, uh, five, five substitutions, substitutions because uh, the fixture is going to be, they're going to be having a congested fixture. And as a result, because they want to end the league before the end of June, mm. and they've got nine games to go. And as a result, there will be a very humongous workload on the players and the team. So five substitutions per team, two substitutions at a time, and you must complete your five substitutions within a space of three breaks, which includes the first half break. So I think that 45 minutes will remain, and then... You know, football will be back, but of course, without a key ingredient, the fans. Yeah. Now, looking at the fan angle now, do you think that football will have its normal flow without the fans? And uh, I'm sure the players too will be very careful on the football pitch. Of course. It's like now when you have a wedding without guests. Mm. That's how it feels to play football without fans. The... The the enthusiasm, the the fervor, the life, the 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 key part is gone, and it's going to even tell on the players, because even footballers who go to play before large crowds, and then they go to some ground and see maybe five thousand spectators, mm. it tells, it tells, it affects their spirit, it affects, it affects their their enthusiasm. There's a footballer who plays in Latvia who I spoke with, he said to me that in Latvia, the normal thing is that you have just 200 people watching games because football is not big in Latvia. Mm. That whenever it gets onto the pitch, it somehow affects his, his, his enthusiasm because he looks at the stand and he sees only 200 people like your family members coming to watch you. <laughs> yeah. Now, these guys are going to be playing before an empty stadium. Mm. A guy, I mean, footballers who are used to playing before large crowds, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, we don't have to play with nobody watching, it's going to take something humongous away from the game. But hey, that is the best possible option we have right now, you know, to save the life of football clubs. Very true. Now, I, I heard something. I don't know how true it is. I heard that an app will be created um, to more like simulation for football fans to have their voices in the football pitch. I don't know how, if that is true and if it's going to be used in the German Bundesliga. 
some clubs are muting the idea. Actually, this is coming from some uh, some some of the fans of the clubs. Mm. They say they're going to be creating images. They're going to be creating sounds that will replicate the fan voices and all of that to be able to recreate the atmosphere. Like you have fans at the center, but yeah. But let's see how it goes. Like well, like I've always said, when the preferred is not available. The available becomes the preferred. Preferable. Now let's look at the situation in England. Talks have been endless, uh, but no decision yet has been made. Now the UK government announced that there should be no professional sports even behind closed doors in England until the 1st of June at the earliest. Now what do you think should be the best decision? Because most of the football fans think that it's all political in England. Uh, I mean, England is in a more critical situation. Mm. The pandemic, the coronavirus is basically biting harder in England than in Germany. Yeah. And credit to the German government, they've done a, an uh, incredible, incredibly excellent job in containing the virus and basically uh, getting people to recover on time and then managing the death rate. Mm. But since it cannot be said of England, where you have, I think, more than 20,000 dead right now, mm. and that says a lot about how bad it is in England. And in this kind of uh, situation, it will be difficult to reach a decision um, as far as uh, with starting football is concerned. But I think they are gradually, gradually getting there, asking all the players who are overseas to return. Uh, players are beginning to train individually. But there's no unison in England. We've seen uh, a player of uh, Norwich City coming out to say that if Norwich City is relegated on the pitch mm. and you don't have clubs in the second, in the championship uh, being promoted, promoted on the pitch, it will be some kind of marginalization. It will be unfair. So there's still a bit of discord as far as England is concerned. In Germany, all of the clubs, all of the bodies, parties involved came to a unified agreement and of course gave the Bundesliga, the DFL, the go ahead to present their proposal to the government, which eventually resulted into what we're having tomorrow. So in England, there's still so many rough edges, so many issues to sort out. And of course, the government, which has the final say, is still not convinced mm. as to whether to resume football. So it's still quite, quite complicated in England. Mm. Now, going back to Germany, are you expecting the best of football this weekend or probably from next week or next two weeks? I think that it will start slowly. Uh, even the players, somehow, they still... I'm, I'm sure that for many players, in their private conversation, they would have thought that the idea to restart football yeah. is insensitive, but they can't voice it out publicly. Mm. So there's still that rustiness, not even physically, you know, mentally, psychologically, and what have you. Mm. That would tell in the performances of all the teams. But, you know, football has a way of bringing out the best in you. When the adrenaline starts to pump, yeah. you start to swing it, you begin to get your groove on again. But it will take some time for us to see uh, the very best of all these teams. Like maybe three weeks, like you said. But, hey, you never can tell. Maybe tomorrow it will become we'll another fire, fire team. Fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Omar, for speaking with us. And once again, a belated happy birthday to you. Always a pleasure. <laughs>